Hello everyone. Welcome to this video on the XYZ wing, or as my counterparts across the globe call it, the XYZ wing. If you're not familiar with XY wings, you might want to review my previous lesson on that since this is a similar strategy. We are still looking at three cells with three candidates, but now the pivot has three candidates instead of just two. Let's look at this example of an XY wing. You can see three cells, but they only have two candidates each. The pivot cell is this one with the one and two candidates. Let's call them X and Y. And then the wings or pincers are these two cells. And one of them has the X value and the other has the Y value, but they both also have a third candidate. In this case, you can see this cell has a one and this cell has a two and both these cells have a three in common as well. These cells are referred to as pincers and both these cells must see the pivot cell and of course they do. This cell is in the same block as the pivot and this cell is in the same row. So now any cell that sees both pincers cannot be a three and therefore can be eliminated. Here we have two cells that see both pincers. They are both in the same row as this cell and they are in the same block as this cell. So we can eliminate the three from both these cells and then this cell becomes an eight and this cell is a nine. Okay, so that's a recap on the XY wing and please check out my full tutorial on it but now let's move on to the XYZ wing. Notice how the pivot in the XY wing has two candidates. Well, now let's add a third candidate and now we have an XYZ wing. Some people call this a bent triple. It's the same thing. The difference here is that now the Z candidate can only be eliminated from the cell that sees both pincers and the pivot cell. In this example, the pivot cell has all three candidates. Let's label them as X, Y, and Z. And one of the pincers is in the same block as the pivot cell. Let's label these as X and Z. And then the other pincer or wing will be in either the same row or column as the pivot cell. In this example, it's in the same row so let's label these two candidates as Y and Z. So to be clear, this cell with three candidates is the pivot cell and these cells with just two candidates are the wings or pincers. Any cell that sees all three cells, the pivot and the two pincers cannot have the Z candidate and that's the shared candidate between the pincers which in this case is a three. There are always two cells that see both pincers and the pivot cell, this cell and this cell. These two cells are in the same block as this pincer and the pivot cell and in the same row as this pincer. So the threes in both these cells can be eliminated and that leaves us with a four and a seven. Okay, I think it's time for some real examples. Here's a Sudoku puzzle in progress. In block three, we have a cell with the candidates one, three, and nine. This is our pivot cell. In the same block is a cell with candidates three and nine. And in the same row, we have a cell with a one and a nine. So here we have an XYZ wing, otherwise known as a bent triple. This cell, the pivot cell, has XYZ, that's the one, three, and nine. And this cell in the same block has X and Z, and this cell in the same row has Y and Z. These cells in the wings, also called pincers, share the Z candidate. That's the nine. 
So the nine can be eliminated from any cell that sees all three cells, the two pincers and the pivot cell. This cell is in the same block as the XZ pincer cell, and it's in the same row as the YZ pincer cell, so we can eliminate the nine in this cell. And once we eliminate that nine, the only number this cell can be is a six. Let me give you another example, and then I'll explain the logic behind the XYZ wing and why it works. Here's another puzzle in progress. The pivot cell in this example is here, and we are interested in the three, six, and seven in this cell. This cell in the same block contains a three and seven, so this is our XZ cell, and this cell in the same column contains a three and a six, so this is our YZ cell. The Z is the shared candidate, which is the three. Now we can eliminate the three from any cell that sees both pincers and the pivot cell. This cell sees all three cells and it has a three, so we can eliminate that from this cell. By the way, there will always be two cells that see all three cells of the XYZ wing. In this case, the other cell is this one. It also sees all three cells. It's in the same column as these two cells and the same block as this one. However, it is already solved with a four, so there is nothing to eliminate here. So now, why does this work? Well, at least one of these three XYZ wing cells must be a three, right? Since we have three candidates, the three, six, and seven, split between these three cells, and all three cells share the three, then at least one of these cells has to be a three. So any cell that sees all three cannot be a three. To prove this, let's play a what if game. Let's say this pivot cell is the three. Then right away, we know that neither of these two cells can be a three. In fact, any cell in this block cannot be a three. Okay, now what if this cell is the three? Well, again, that means that no other cell in this block can be a three, so the three can be eliminated. And then lastly, what if this cell down here is the three? Well, then this cell is in the same column, and so it can't be a three. So you see, if any of these three cells is a three, and one of them has to be, then these two cells can't be a three. This cell is already a four, so we can eliminate the three from this cell. One more thing I wanna show you, and that is how to find an XYZ wing. The easiest way to find it, aside from it just hitting you in the face, is to go block by block, looking to see if there's a cell with just three candidates. If you find it, then you can go ahead and look for the wings. Here is the puzzle with the three back in it. Now let's start with block one. Block one has two cells with three candidates, the six, seven, and eight. Now one of the wings has to be in the same block, so is there another cell in block one that has just two candidates and those two candidates are one of the same numbers, six, seven, and eight? Well, this cell has two candidates, but they are the three and seven, so that won't work. Now let's move on to block two and we can see that this cell has three candidates, the three, six, and seven. And then we see in the same block, there's a by-value cell, that's a cell with two numbers, the three and the seven, which are two of the numbers that we're looking for. Now we need to find a cell in either the same row or the same column as the pivot cell that has either a three and a six or a six and a seven. There's nothing in the row but in the same column, there's a three and six, and now I've found my XYZ wing. You can do this block by block to see if you can find an XYZ wing in other puzzles. If you're stuck, this strategy can definitely help unstick you. 
And now you know what an XYZ wing is, I hope. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.